Hello and welcome to my review of Pokemon Brilliant Diamond. All of the gameplay in this video was captured on a Nintendo Switch and the game is, of course, an exclusive to the Nintendo Switch. I should also let you know that a review code for the full game was provided to me by Nintendo. So then, I don't think I really need to go over exactly what Pokemon is. I mean, it's been around for over 20 years and in that time, there's been a lot of mainline Pokemon games. However, I imagine that this game could very well be a lot of players' first Pokemon game, so I think it's worth at least telling you what the games have to offer. And while we go over this, keep in mind that you can also get the Shining Pearl version of this game. It's only marginally different to this one, and the only real difference is the Pokemon that you can catch within each version. The first important thing to note is that Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl are actually remakes of the original game, simply titled Diamond and Pearl. The originals were released on the Nintendo DS in 2006 in Japan and 2007 in the West. The new remakes do of course offer some updated graphics and gameplay as well as some new features. As I said a moment ago, I probably don't need to go into detail and explain every little thing about what a Pokemon game is. People who aren't even fans of Pokemon know exactly what these games are and how they work, so what I'll do is focus on what's new and how things have changed from the originals. The very first thing players will notice when playing this game is that there's been an obvious visual upgrade. The older games were 2D and used sprite-based graphics. In the new version, however, everything from the NPCs to the world around you to the Pokemon themselves have all been completely remodeled in 3D for the Nintendo Switch, and the game even allows for more freedom of movement. In the older games, you could move up, down, left and right, but in the new version, you can move diagonally and much more freely. Not only have the visuals and movement been updated, but also the music. You'll notice a lot of familiar tunes that have all been jazzed up a little bit, and the same is true for a lot of the in-game sound effects as well. The story in general is something that I'll leave for you to discover on your own, but as usual, you play as a new Pokemon trainer heading out on their first adventure. After a short while, you'll get to pick your starting Pokemon from three different options, Turtwig, Chimchar, and Piplup. After a short while, you'll be given the Poketch, which is essentially a digital watch that has various apps that you can install on it. As is usually the case, your goal is to obtain the eight gym badges, defeat the Elite Four, become the champion, and of course, catch all the Pokemon. Once you've beaten the Elite Four and become the champion, you'll be happy to know that there is quite a lot of endgame content to keep you busy long after the credits roll. You can, of course, still get the National Dex add-on for your Pokedex that allows you to catch and record Pokemon from other regions, and very soon after that, you'll get the Poke Radar that helps you find specific Pokemon and even helps you locate shiny variants. After you've become the champion and unlocked the National Dex, you'll gain access to a new location called Ramanus Park. This park allows you to find and catch legendary Pokemon from other regions, but to do that, you will need to collect mysterious shards from the Grand Underground. Speaking of the Grand Underground, it's another new feature that allows you to explore the caves and caverns underneath the main world. You can venture down into the underground from pretty much anywhere except from indoor locations. Relatively early on in the game, you'll meet a person called the Underground Man in Eternia City who'll give you the Explorer Kit which unlocks the Grand Underground. When roaming around in these tunnels, you'll find rarer Pokemon than usual and you'll even find starter Pokemon from older generations after obtaining the National Dex. You'll be able to travel to locations like Full Moon Island, Snowpoint Temple and Stark Mountain in the hopes of catching various legendary beasties. For players out there who prefer to battle with their Pokemon rather than collect them all, you'll have access to the Battle Zone and the Battle Tower. The Battle Zone is comprised of three areas, the Starting Area, Survival Area and Resort Area. It's basically three connected areas that you need to battle through and explore. The Survival Area in the middle is actually a kind of rest area despite sounding like something different. In the Battle Tower, you'll be battling against NPCs or other players online in order to ascend the tower and earn points. The higher you climb, the more points you'll earn for a win streak and then you can trade in your battle points for items. There's also a few smaller things to discover but I'll leave those for you to find on your own. And so that's what this game actually is, but now let's talk about some of the things I liked in this remake. The very first thing I want to address in this section is the graphics and the way they've been presented here. Before the game released, I saw a lot of negative reactions to the direction that was taken in regards to how it looks. I found that to be actually kind of strange because when I first saw the reveal of the remakes, I thought it looked really good personally. Apparently, the problem was that a lot of players didn't like the whole chibi look that the games were given. They wanted it to look more like Sword and Shield, and actually thinking about it, I do kind of understand that viewpoint. I mean, Sword and Shield are basically the current standard, and so it would make more sense for them to remake Diamond and Pearl in that style. That being said, I personally really like the style they went with anyway. To me, it just feels like a 3D upgrade of the originals, and if I had to bet, I'd say that was done intentionally. I think they wanted to keep that retro feeling that the original Diamond and Pearl had. I mean, they were 2D DS games and the remakes looked like modernized 3D versions of exactly that, at least to my eyes. 
I suppose you could argue it makes the game look a bit dated, especially for a full price remake, but I like it and that was true from the very first time I saw it. But yeah, in general, it's very chunky looking in a good way and I think the game feels very vibrant and very alive. It's not perfect and does definitely have some outdated aspects to it, but overall I'm more than happy with the visuals. Something I really appreciate about the remakes is all of the additions. I think they just add a great deal of extra content for people that want to play past the story, especially the Grand Underground and things like that. I just found it really fun to be able to take a bit of time away from the story pretty much whenever I wanted and dig down into the underground. You can just, you know, explore as much as you want and try to catch yourself some rare Pokemon while you're at it. It's good of them to give you the ability to do this quite early on as well. I'm glad that I don't have to wait until the end game to explore the underground, although you do have to wait until after you've beaten the story for most things. I think that's all right though. I mean, you can't have it all from the start because it just wouldn't make much sense. And lastly, this is just a solid Pokemon game. It does feel a bit more old school than most of the modern ones, but in my opinion, that's not a bad thing at all. It is a bit hard to explain it, but the game just does what I expect it to do, if you see what I mean. It's a good, solid Pokemon game, but that really shouldn't be a surprise due to the fact it's a remake. Anyone who's ever played a Pokemon game should enjoy this and should only have minor nitpicks if they have any at all. I've played and beaten every every Pokemon mainline game since Red and Blue in 1998, and being completely honest, Diamond and Pearl were never really that high up on my list. I enjoyed them at the time of course, but you know, these remakes have given me the ability to look at them in a new and up-to-date way, while still retaining the look and feel of the originals, and that's something I personally appreciated. At the end of the day, it's a remake of an older Pokemon game with some new additions, so really I don't think you can ask for much more than what we got. And I think that about does it for my positive opinion, so let's go over a few things that I didn't like so much. So, even though I just said that the games are solid and they do what I expect them to do, I do personally want a lot more from the series. To be very fair though, as I just said, these are obviously remakes of an existing game and it's virtually set in stone. To be clear, just so that everyone understands what I'm saying, I did not expect this game to break the mold or to be radically different because, again, it's a remake. I expected it to be an updated version of Diamond and Pearl, which is what it is, and that's absolutely what it should be. Sure, I do definitely want more creativity from Pokemon as a franchise in the future, but Brilliant Diamond and of course Shining Pearl are perfectly fine. Sure, they're not going to be mind-blowing or anything like that, but they are absolutely fine and they do what they're meant to do. I don't honestly think there's that much to dislike. I can't say that I ever really noticed anything that I would call actively bad. I do recall seeing a few tiny graphical glitches, but they were so rare and minor that they barely need mentioning. And actually thinking about it right now, I don't think I even managed to record any of them, but when I go to edit the video, I'll see if I can find one. But yeah, it's kind of difficult to give any negative opinions on a remake or a remaster unless it releases obviously broken. Because, you know, if it's a good updated version of an old game, you probably have the same issues or the same positives that you had with the original. So I guess it may be best to think about what issues I had or that you had with the originals. And so I think Diamond and Pearl was the first Pokemon game to make me question some of the actual Pokemon designs. Liking a Pokemon's design or looks is pretty subjective and of course I'm sure Bidoof must have, you know, a massive fan base, but even the starters weren't that great for me personally. I went with Piplup because I quite like Empoleon, but yeah, the other two don't really do it for me. Especially Chimchar, which is a shame for me because fire is actually my favourite type. I've just never liked a single one of the monkey or ape Pokemon. I have no idea why, but I just find them so boring. I, again, I don't know why, I just don't like them. Chimchar could have easily been the strongest of the three and I still wouldn't pick it, but again, that's just me. I have had a look around and done some research into what other people might have had issues with. I do this all the time with my reviews because I feel like it's a good idea to get other people's viewpoints as well as my own. The main thing that kept coming up when I was looking around was the story and how this generation is actually considered to be the most boring and dull of them all. I can kind of see what they mean and you have to remember that a lot of us are playing Diamond and Pearl for the second time or more in some cases. I do think the overarching narrative is quite weak in Diamond and Pearl and the initial selection of Pokemon within the game is alright I suppose but again this is a remake and you do have the national decks that allowed you to catch pretty much everything from Gen 1, 2, 3 and 4. But really there isn't much more I can say in this section. I didn't have any big problems to speak of, the game ran fine and you know the original Diamond and Pearl were decent games and now the remakes are also decent games. So let's move on to the conclusion. In my opinion, Pokemon Brilliant Diamond is a solid, stable, and a mostly satisfying Pokemon adventure. It's not the best of the Pokemon games, but I also don't think it's the worst. I think it sits squarely in the middle, and that's okay. 
If you have the choice, I would easily recommend this over Sword and Shield, believe it or not. Sword and Shield was, for me, the worst mainline Pokemon game for a number of reasons, but we won't get into all of that now. The strongest thing that the Diamond and Pearl remakes have going for them, besides the obvious upgrades, is the fact that it feels like a classic Pokemon game. It was already a good Pokemon game, and a good Pokemon game it remains. Ultimately, I think this is going to be an easy purchase for most Pokemon fans. I mean, there's a lot of collectors and fans of the series who will just snap the game up day one, regardless of reviews, and that's cool. It does what it's supposed to do, it adds a few things, and it updates its looks, which is all it really needs to do. I think if you're new to Pokemon, then I would actually recommend you pick this up instead of Sword and Shield. That may be controversial to some, but I think you'll get a much more satisfying experience with Brilliant Diamond, or indeed Shining Pearl. Despite the fact that it's not the best Pokemon game, it does have a lot of charm and personality, and to me, that's very important. It's also kind of nice that this may be someone's first Pokemon adventure. It could be an adult or a small child, and that's the thing. Pokemon transcends age, and I think this would be a great place to start for anyone looking to discover the magic of Pokemon. So there you go, that's my review of Pokemon Brilliant Diamond. It's available right now on Nintendo Switch, but of course you can also pick up the Pokemon Shining Pearl version if that interests you more. If you enjoyed the video, I really hope you'll consider subscribing to the channel. If you like what I do and want to offer your support, check out the first link in the video description down below. But with all that said, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.